All right, we should be good. All right, is everybody there? First John chapter, chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. We read this um, a few weeks ago on uh, our last series that we, that we did all in, but I want to focus on this today as we continue part three of our series called Mirrors. Um, let's read First John 1, 5 through 10. It says this, This is the message we have heard from him, and announce to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin." If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. The title of my message today is How to Walk with God for part three of our series, mirrors how to walk with God. Let's pray. Um, dear Lord, thank you for an awesome time of worship, God. Um, as we now dissect and engage your word, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would be here, Lord. God, it's not that you're actually not here. You're always present, God. You're everywhere present at all times. But God, just help us to be aware of your presence, God, to yield to the Holy Spirit. God, that you begin to shed light in areas of our lives, God, that we have tried to hide from you, which is just complete stupidity and foolishness, foolishness, honestly, God, because nothing is hidden from your sight, God. Even the things that we do behind closed doors, the thoughts that we think that no one hears, Lord, everything, God, what's a secret here on earth is a, a well-known and public in heaven. So we acknowledge with you what is sin. God, help us to deal with some of the hard truths of our lives, some of the areas that we got to deal with. God, begin to move and work on our behalf. God, Waymaker, God, you move on our behalf. But all, sometimes we think that we, are, we sit and idly wait for you, God. Most of the time you're waiting and saying it's already be, being done now by faith. You go and move and receive your blessing, God. So help us to be movers and doers, not just hearers of the word. God, but doers. So thank you for today. Thank you for every individual person that's here today, God. We, we ask that you would show us through your holy word how to walk as you have designed us to walk. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. This might be one of the fastest sermons I preach because my boy Abraham got to leave in by one o'clock and he running the thing back there. So it's okay, man. God is good. I can give y'all 15 minutes sound bite in this. So what I want to talk about today is how to walk with God. How many of you guys know there, there is a certain way that God wants us to walk? And if you've been with us in the book of Ephesians, we've been talking about what it means to walk with God. But I raise a hand. How, do you, how many of you guys know or remember if you've been part of our book, if, uh, study in Ephesians, what does it mean to walk with God? You can shout out to me. What does that mean if you know? Okay, follow the Holy Spirit. Anybody else? That's good. I just, that's good. I mean, the majority of y'all were not in Bible study. It's okay. We still love y'all. If y'all would have been in Bible study, y'all would have known. Like my brother Zach said, follow the Holy Spirit. But to walk literally means it's a lifestyle. It's a daily walk with Jesus and as well to follow the Holy Spirit. So that's what I want to talk about. There is a certain way, according to the Bible, that God wants us to walk. How we are to walk and how we are to live the lives. And as we're talking about mirrors, that's our st- our series has we're focusing about our identity in Jesus and how to be Christ followers, how to be disciples. What does it look like when we're in trials? We talked about that last week. What does it look like to mirror God as ambassadors? And now as believers, if we are to mirror God, if we're going to be like Jesus, if we're going to walk the walk and talk to talk, so to speak, we have to talk about sin. Amen. The church's favorite thing to talk about, sin. Ain't nobody want to talk about church. Or sin, it's okay, because we, we, we trifle a lot of times, we make a lot of mistakes. And if you want to have an intimate, beautiful, 
intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit of God, when you wake up in the morning, God just talks to you. You know what I'm saying? When you, if you close, I mean, you could be so close with God, you wake up in the morning and the Holy Spirit is like, brother, it's going to rain, put a jacket on. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Or you driving in the car. Some of y'all older, older people who've been walking with the Lord, you know what I'm talking about. Just something, oh, thank you, God. Where did that come from? And when you just have a long relationship with God, God talks to you. If you want to have that relationship, maybe you see mom and dad, like, I want to have that. You know, my mom will pray over toast and she just go to glory. That's Yes, over bread, burnt bread. Like the, by the time she's done, it's like it turns into like croissants. She's been praying so long. Like you want to have an intimate, healthy relationship. See, a lot of us say, oh, you know, we walk with God. We say, man, God is not. I love God, but, you know, I just don't. I don't feel him. I don't I don't sense him. I, I see what you're saying. I don't get it. Maybe it's because there's some sin in your life or maybe because you don't have an intimate relationship with God. So as we talk about mirrors today, I want to talk about how this the book talks about how this word is a mirror to our lives and lets us see ourselves. So what is the purpose of a mirror? So when you, when you have a mirror, uh, many people have mirrors for uh, many different reasons. One of the purpose we have mirrors is to see ourselves. Amen? Did someone look in the mirror today while you're getting ready? Amen. Yes. Everyone, we have a mirror. We look at a mirror. We want to see ourselves. You know what I love about mirrors? Mirrors is going to tell you like it is. A mirror won't lie to you. Amen. This might be more amens from the females than for the males. But like, you know, males, like we, we look in the mirror, we do our thing, we go females, it's, it's a different story. When you go to the mirror, you may think you look a certain way. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Some of us, we may feel like we, we go to the gym one day, we feel like we lost weight. I'm feeling good. You step in the mirror, my God, go back to the gym, the mirror's going to tell you. you. You may think your hair look good, you go to the mirror, oh, it's a hot mess. You may talk to your friends, you thought you brushed your teeth and you did the floss and then you got a little something in your teeth, right? A mirror is going to tell you like it is. It's not going to lie to you. It's not going to sugarcoat it. A mirror will let you know how it really is. The purpose of a mirror is to let you see yourself as you truly are. Right? That's what a mirror does. Then there are distorted mirrors or images. Abraham, you can put the, the second one with the kid. My bad. I forgot to tell you. I'm just trying to be good on the time. So there's a second like that. There are distorted images of a mirror. A distorted mirror, funhouse mirror. You ever been to the carnival? You see all those mirrors, different shape, makes you look scary, it's funny, you got a big dome, so you know, some of us have a shot, we got big heads like me, and when you go there, your head's even bigger, it emphasizes all your flaws. A mirrors, these are popular at carnivals, fairs. Um, instead of a normal mirror that tells you how you really look, these mirrors distort images and gives you a false sense of reality. The funhouse mirror or distorted mirrors offer a distorted view of reality. So watch this. God's word is, Abraham, you can go to the first picture, is, is a mirror. It's going to let you know how you really look, right? So where is, there it is, right? It's going, to let you, it's going to let you see how you see yourself. When you come to God's mirror, in other words, when you come to the word of God, the Bible is going to let you know what's wrong with you. It's going to tell you. The Bible is the only book in human history that when you read it, it reads you. Harry Potter ain't doing that. Fifty Shades of Grey is not doing that. How to Win Friends, Influence People, Business Books, Sociology Books, all those other good books that God has gifted us. No other book in human history besides the Bible is going to read you. So when you come to the Bible, the Bible is going to read you. The Bible, in other words, God's mirror is going to tell you like it is. It's not going to lie to you. It's not going to fabricate stuff. It's going to be honest with you. The Bible will always tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. God is on one side. He's on my side. I mean, on his side, rather. He's not on my side. He's a for himself. Remember Joshua when he was going to war and he saw the angel of the Lord come to him? He said, are you on my side or their side? He said, no, no, no. I'm on God's side. Like, there is no pick and choose. God's word is for himself. God is going to tell you when you read the Bible. It's going to tell you what you need to hear, family. But then there's another mirror. That's the mirror of the world. When you go there, the mirror of the world is going to let you Hear what you want to hear. It's going to tell you how beautiful you are. That's the Photoshop version. That's where you buy and download your favorite filters or your favorite light. It's going to give you a, a picture that gives you the best image of yourself. It's not a real one. It's just a good looking one. All the highlights, you know what I'm saying? When I take photography, I edit photos. People say, oh, can you take my pimples out? Can you move the fat here? Can you fix that? Like, that's the world's mirror. It's, going to, it's not going to let you be real and authentic and genuine. It's going to give you a false mirror image. It's going to hide your blemishes, your imperfections. It can add all your favorite things. It can emphasize. You know how girls do. They want a big butt. They fake it. It's okay. And they just like hold it. About to barely die because they're trying to hold it in. Like it, it emphasizes all these false realities. It's not authentic. So my question for you guys today, church, is this. 
Which mirror did you look at today? God's mirror or the world's mirror? Where do you get your reflection, your identity from? Do you come to God's word to be read by the book or do you go to the world so the world can tell you how good you look? Today we'll be talking about how identity, how our our identity is in Christ, right? And how that transforms the way we look and on the way we deal with sin. God's desire for you is to be like Jesus in every area of life. I don't have this on um, the screen. If you can write this down later and read it, it's 1 Thessalonians 4, 2 through 3. Well, half of the first part of 3. It says, For you know what commands we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is God's will. So if you ever want to know what God wants for you, this is God's will, your sanctification. In other words, what does that mean? To sanctify, we've been through Ephesians, we talked about this word a lot. To sanctify or to be holy means to be set apart. That's what God's desire is for you, to be set apart. And during the, the church in uh, Thessalonica, they were living crazy. It was sex was rampant. They were going all crazy. And God wanted them to be different from that world and that culture and to be set apart for him. In one sense, all believers, once you put your faith in Christ, you're already set apart. You're perfect. You're beautiful. No matter how crazy you are, if you put your faith in Jesus, God the Father, because God the Son and what he's done for you, you're perfect. That is positional sanctification. And there's another sense that when we are called to be separate from, um, from the world and from sin, this is known as practical or our daily walk with Jesus. God desires that we say no to all forms of sin. Anything that comes between you and God, like Amen said earlier, an idol. I love how Tony Evans says, an idol is a noun, a person, place, or thing, or thought. Anything that trumps God, that is an idol. If you choose a show on Netflix over God's word, that's an idol. If you choose a person, a sp- whatever it may be, those things are idol, and we must, we are called to divine service for God. We are called to be his, his divine instruments. We have been called, set apart. This is God's will for us. I wish I could talk more about that. I got to move a little bit quicker. Right? If you want to be a mirror of God, like we've been talking about the last few weeks, then you need to be a Christian who regularly confesses sin. How many of you guys, you can go ahead and raise your hand. I'm raising my hand myself. You feel free. You do not have to raise your hand. It's cool. But how many of you guys have a daily practice? I'm daily, for myself, it's about every minute, practice of confessing sin. Are you in, is that a regular part of your lifestyle? You just got mad at somebody. You thought about, oh, God, forgive me. And you just daily. And a matter of fact, let's go further. We talked about it in our study in Ephesians. We're going to start, hopefully, by God's grace. We're going to start creating little pockets of life groups and community with women with women, men with men, where we come together and we just confess sin. In other words, when we come together, we ask three practical questions. What have you been inputting in your soul? What have you been reading? What podcasts have you been watching? What books have you been reading? How have you been inputting and growing your life? The next thing is output. How have you been sharing from your input with others and sharing the gospel and having conversations that's going to last a million years from now? If you think about this week or the last month, the conversations that you have with friends, what you tweeted, what you Snapchatted, whatever you you liked, whatever it may be, how many of those conversations or things are going to last 10,000 years from now? Right? Have you ever thought about that deep? How many of those conversations are going to last? Like, how have you shared with your friend? The last one is confession. How many of you guys have people that you go to regularly? Not because I'm telling you, but because you yourself want to be right with God. Not in the sense that you have to earn his approval, but you're going to people and confessing your sin and asking God that you need God to, uh, just to confess that you, you hey, you get, you get a sister in Christ who's going to love on you and say, hey, man, I just... This is, what I've been, um, this is how I've been feeding my flesh. Like, I've been indulging in this. I've been watching this. I've been listening to this, and it's killing me. Like, can you pray for me? And you pray. Do you have that as your regular practice? You'll hear more about this in the coming weeks as we begin to walk this out. Because if you want an intimate relationship with God, but if you're, in the habitual dis- uh, and you're not in the habitual discipline or confessing sin regularly, God can't hang out with you. You want to hang out with God, you got to be hanging out with people who do what God wants. You want God around you, right? You got to do what God wants. You got to walk the way God wants you to walk. You can't just say I'm a Christian and talk about it but not be about that life, right? Does that make sense? God wants you to be where he's at. God only hangs out with folks who separate themselves from all forms of sin, and whenever they stumble and fall into temptation, they confess their sin. That's what we need to do. Confession is admitting what we did wrong. We agree with God. We don't try to lie. 
Oh, it's okay, you know what I'm saying? I know it's not that bad. I'm not like Susie, you know what I mean? I'm not like, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm all good. I'm not worldly Wanda. She's out there. God, I'm not as bad as, no. You need to be honest and real about your sin and your struggles. You need to call it like it is. You need to call it the way God calls it. You need to agree of what the scriptures say about your sin and the sin that you're dealing with. This is how we are going to mirror God, reflect God in our lives. Like if you're in a courtroom and there's a law against you and you broke the law, you got to confess, this. I'm, I'm guilty. I, I, I've broken the law. I have done this thing the same way God wants us to do with that. But here's the problem. We don't like God's word or we don't like, we like this Photoshop mirror. We like the distorted mirror because some of us don't want to deal with our brokenness. Nobody really wants to know how damaged you are. We want to run away. Our natural desire is to not deal with our problems. We want to run away, far away from that. But God's word, when you come with it, we need to deal with God's holy word. We can't fake it till we make it. That's what the world tells us. You ever thought about that? Fake it till you make it. And we think that just because, like, the, we think the world wants us to be fake. Oh, don't be honest. Don't be genuine. They're going to judge you. You can't say that. Like, you got to fake it and lie. Like, that's how you make it. No, people are looking. Have you ever seen anybody who's just authentic and real? Even, like, when Alicia Keys stopped wearing makeup, though, everybody praised her. Oh, my God. Like, she was just real. This is who I really am. Or whatever it may be. When you're genuine and authentic, most people is like, I can relate with that. It's always the authentic person, not the fake, the Photoshop. Even if you talk to models when they do their pictures, they're like, man, that's not even me. I don't even look like that. You ever seen any of your famous people? My God, some of us will probably be devastated if we met some of our favorite celebrities and y'all just some average folk. Hey, I thought you were, you ain't nobody, right? We just get lied, we get caught up in this facade. We don't wanna be honest with, our, um, with what we're dealing with. So let's just walk through this text as best as we can. Um, Abraham, I know I got four minutes, you can head out. We'll, we'll figure it out, bro. You can leave when you gotta leave. Let me, let me read this. 1 John 5, uh, 1, 5 through 10. So follow along again in your Bible. I got one point for us and then a couple, couple things we'll talk about and then we'll be done. It says this, this is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we, uh, we walk in light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in you. If we confess our sins, one of my favorite verses, he is faithful and righteous too, so that he will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and the word is not in us. My only point for us today is when we walk with God, we will be moved to confess our sin, seek forgiveness, and turn away from a sinful life. So if you want to mirror God, if you want to have an intimate relationship with God, you got to be honest with your sin. If that's not a regular practice for you and you wonder why it's dry, you wonder why you ain't heard from God in a long while, like God needs you to deal with some stuff. I don't know what that is from you, for you. I don't have to know what that is for you, but you know what that is. You know what you're struggling with. You know what you're dealing with. Get community, get other people around you to pray for you, to walk with you. If you want God to move on your behalf, if you want to feel God's presence and be empowered by him, you have to to treat sin because God is light. Look at verse five, it says, God is light, John says. Light is a common metaphor in the Bible, right? It's, it's a metaphor for God. The fact that God is light, it, it has a natural contrast with darkness. If, if it's a metaphor for righteousness and goodness, then darkness signifies evil and sin. So God is light, he's pure, he's holy. God cannot have an ounce of sin around him. What happened when Adam and Eve ate from the tree? Like, we, f we ran away from God's presence. God walked, and God literally had to remove them from, the presence of his, from his presence because God cannot be with sin. God cannot deal with sin. God can't hang out with people who are sinful. See, some of y'all want to worship here and think it's all good, and your life is just trash. 
It's okay, I'm trash too. Don't worry, but I'm not just saying you're horrible. We all, like, I'm messed up too. We want to worship God. We come to church. We lie to mom and dad. We go to school. We a completely different person. Our conversations are different. Our thoughts are different. The thing we read, we don't open up the Bible. Complete dust everywhere. The only time we open up the Bible is when we come to church, if we come to church, or if we come to Bible study, or if y'all join the Bridge Sisterhood. There is no desire for you. There is no draw for you to grow and to want to spend time with God. God is light, and if we are to be his mirrors, if we are going to spend time with him and have a relationship, we got to be honest about our sin. See, God is, is, his eyes are pure. God, the Bible said his word is a double-edged sword. It pierces, it sees our thoughts and intentions. People see what you do. I've always said this, and God sees why you do it. That's scary. God sees the motivation behind everything. Everything you do, God knows why you do it. He sees it. Nothing is hidden from him, fam. You can delete your web browser history. You can delete your tweet, your chat, whatever it is. It's in the database of heaven. It's not going to get lost. I tried to go to MySpace a few weeks ago to see some of my old photos. When they transitioned over, all the photos got deleted, lost, like gone forever. In heaven, mm -mm -mm -mm. an angel walk up there and just, Jonas, Jonas, okay. Oh, it's, it's never going to be deleted, family. It's there. But thank God in his grace, if you're covered, it's under the blood policy. They ain't going to go back there and look at it. It's been paid for. So nothing is hidden from God. He is light, and if um, John is preaching this, like God is light, and in him there is no darkness. That's why God can't be around sin. He can, but, but thanks God, through Jesus, he can be around us if we put our faith in Jesus. Verse 6, it says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and yet and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. If we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. So if you're here today at church and you say, I love God, I'm walking with God, but you're in sin, you're fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself. Just because you come here, you say a few words, you know a couple verses, you know the Christian language, I'll pray for you, God bless you, you know all the top hits, that doesn't mean you're walking with God. That doesn't mean you have an intimate, strong relationship. You're fooling yourself. You're lying to yourself. This Paul, literally, the context of this, First John is writing to false teachers. They were claiming to have a relationship with God, and yet they denied him. They would do all sorts of stuff, and they said, we have fellowship. And he says, well, if you are light and you're walking in this and your life does not match your lips, like, a lot of us talk about God, but we don't talk to God. We just talk about God, but we have no relationship with God. That's one of my deepest fears, that I preach more to, about God. I lead Bible studies. I do this. But myself, I'm not spending time with the Lord. That is a dangerous thing. Some of us, we just talk the talk, but we don't walk the walk. Right? We don't walk this lifestyle that God wants for us. Right? God is light, fam. His light is going to expose all of our darkness. We cannot lie. You can't say you have fellowship. Fellowship means to have communion, to share things in common. You want to share with God and have things in common, have a deep, intimate relationship with God. God can't deal with sin. Remember Gideon? I shared that, Judges 6. He said, first, go to your father's house and remove this idol, d destroy at the root, whatever that is, so then I can use you. God wants you to deal with your sin or whatever that is for you because God in his essence he's completely unreservedly absolutely holy and there is no added mixture of sin no taint no nothing I imagine what it was like when they saw Jesus when he came and started preaching to them remember Jesus is 100% God but there was no sin on him can you imagine what that looks like even just to hear him speak I don't know probably no acne I mean he just probably not even musty I don't know if he not, there's no sin. He don't need lotion. I don't know. I'm just going, but this is how I think sometimes. Like, can you imagine? Listen to Jesus talk, and there's no sin. And when you just look into his eyes, and when he's preaching boldly, and he's talking, because no sin is in him, it's just complete, utter holiness and beauty. That's what God is, right? If we do not have the light, we don't know God. If we say we have fellowship and yet and walk in darkness, that means to have a lifestyle. See, some of us come to church, and our lifestyle is darkness. We talk wrong. We think the wrong thoughts. We don't spend time with God. We don't pray. We don't read. We don't fellowship with other believers. You spend more time with non-Christian people, which is fine. That We want to make disciples, but you don't spend time with God's people. You, when you're at church, you're quiet. I, some of my people who've been, I've been in Bible study almost like 10 plus years or longer than that. I've seen so many people, we come to church and talk about God, dead, quiet. People fall asleep. As soon as we say amen, we done. Oh, my, you watch the game, bro. Oh, my God, do you see this? And just lively. But when it comes to the things of God, my God, we don't talk nothing. We don't even know the ABCs of the Bible. That's okay. 
and that we struggle. And God says, if you're going to walk with him, you've got to have this relationship. We lie and do not practice the truth. Don't sit here and lie and act like you're right with God, but when you live in, a, in darkness. You can even lie to me. You could fool me, the preacher, your mom and dad. You will never be able to fool God in the Holy Spirit. God sees you. God sees what you're doing. God sees how you're living. Amen. Hope I'm not losing just so much. I'm trying to ask the Lord while I'm preaching, like if, if I should skip stuff, um, skip stuff. But there's so much here. Okay, let's just uh, continue. Um, let's go to the next text. Verse seven. It says this. But if we walk in light, as He Himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Walking in light denotes a characterized life by truth and holiness and a willingness to be open to his word, resulting in fellowship with one another and with God. When you are just genuine about your life, it's so much easier. You ain't got to be fake it to nobody and lie. Like, do you know how, how joyful it is when you don't live in secrecy? I heard this thing that said Mark Twain once time, Mark Twain was a joker. He told his friends, hey, they found out about you. He told seven of his close friends, they found out about you, run. And literally his friends ran and left and fled the country. And it was a joke. What would have happened if you received a mail? And there's another story of another guy who was genuine. They say they found out everything about you. He opened up. His wife said, what did they find out? I don't know. And shredded. Like, wouldn't it be so much better where you don't have to be fearful if someone came to you? I know everything that you did. Cool, man, me too, man. I'm a mess, I'm anti mess. And you just, when you just embrace how broken you are, but yet God still loves you despite you, right? That's what God wants. When you live in such a way like that, though, you know what God has accomplished for you, and you know that God is light, and God has shown his light in your life, and that now you can have fellowship. And not only that, we can have fellowship with one another. I think the context is referring to God, but even just with one another. It's so freeing. You don't have to be afraid that you're going to be judged. Guess what? We're all sinners, everybody. No one's perfect. Everyone falls short of the glory of God. Everyone makes some mistakes. Everybody messes up. Everybody, no matter how holy or perfect you think they are, just look. Hey, we've seen even wonderful men and leaders that I look up to who have just ridiculous lifestyles that later comes out. And everything will be family. Everything you do will come into the light. No matter how hard you think you try to hide it, you may think even on earth when you die, no one may not bring it up. But when you stand before the king of kings, the one who sees you as you truly are, nothing will ever be hidden. It's better now to confess it. Just be real with it. It's freeing. There's so much I want to go and dissect this. Even look at the life of David when he did not confess his sin with Bathsheba. He said his bones was broken. Like he didn't have joy. It just is so much draining on your life when you have sin family. Be free. As we took communion, if you're, if you, in this, at least in this church here, you have to take the baptism class. If you understand what that means and you examine your life, be real. Say, Jesus, I am a mess. Jesus, I, I, I have sinned. I have chosen these things. Be honest about that. It's freeing. It's for your freedom. It's not to enslave you. Don't believe the lie of the enemy. Walk in light so you can have a wonderful fellowship with God so God can talk to you through his Holy Spirit. Verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. So in this context, what he means, if we have no sin, he's talking about the sin nature. If you could notice verse 8 and 9. Verse 9, verse 8 just says sin. We we'll talks about the sin nature. Verse 9 says sins, plural, with the S, the many sins we commit daily. So he's saying if you're sitting here and you think, man, I don't sin. I'm good. I'm, I'm not like nobody else. Everybody's a sin. David said, in my mother's womb. I was conceived in sin, right? I was give birth. Psalms 51.5, like you were born in sin. You ever see two babies and put one toy there? What do they start doing? It's over. Ain't nobody talk. They can't even talk, but they fighting over that thing, right? Just the sin nature. We're all born with this sin. John, it talks about this. And in, even in this case for sanctification, he says this is a communal pursuit, or in other words, coming together as the body of Christ, that, that he wants us not to hide our sins. He says when we walk in the light, we have fellowship with other believers. He says that we, when we confess our sins, we have to be honest with our sins if we ever want to be cleansed by Jesus' blood. If you want to be refreshed, right, there is a daily one-time thing that God has done, but even for our daily walk with God, even if you're a Christian and you sin, you can broke, break your fellowship with God. That doesn't mean you lose your salvation. This, that means your fellowship or your daily-to-day -day walk with God can be broken and hindered if you're living in sin. God's going to want you to deal with that. So maybe for some of us, it's been a long time. We haven't confessed sin, and God wants us to deal with those things. And I love this. God uses the body of Christ. God uses the church for us to live. Christians are never meant to do life by themselves. 
I was talking to somebody at the laundry. He, he was like, man, I'm, I read my Bible. Um, I just, I pray. I don't go to church. I was like, that's cool, but how is that working for you? Like, and he said, that, like, he works 100 hours a week. His girlfriend got cancer. He said, yeah, I'm just trying to work to take care of it. And I'm like, man, like, I, I'm sorry to hear that, first of all. Like, I don't know what that's like. And I prayed for him, but, like, what? I can't imagine, like, where, I don't know where I would be if it wasn't around, like, some brothers that I had around me that I can just be like, bro, I feel like giving up, and it's just okay, don't give up, and they speak God's word over me. You hear me say this all the time, and I'm going to keep saying it until we believe it and start living this in our life. God wants us to work together to do this. We got to be honest with our sin. We cannot lie um, about what we've done and who we are and be honest. So why is it difficult for some of us to admit when we've done something wrong? You ever been to, like, when people who, have, who struggle with alcohol, they go to the AA thing? Well, you know what they have to do first? It says this, the first step you must make is admitting you have a problem. This is because of denial of the situation keeps people trapped indefinitely. You got to be honest. Don't lie. Don't try to beat around it. You have to be honest. You know, when you come up, you be like, hey, hey, Roy. I'm Roy. How you doing? I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Roy. You like, right? This is when you come to church, like, hey, my name is Jonas. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We're all sinners. Like, that's that. that we got to be honest with it. You can't just try to lie and make it cute. Like, oh, I'm not, like, I'm, a, I'm broken, man. Like, some of us just need to be free and be released from some of the stuff we've been carrying with. And maybe we're afraid because we think if we tell people, they're going to judge us, they're going to make fun of us. They're going to say you can't do this, but God wants us to be free from that. God has removed that. Be honest with what the issue is. Right? I think sometimes we don't want to confess our sins even to other people or to God because we don't understand God's grace. If we, if we think we say it, God is not going to forgive us. You think you've been too far. Let me tell you, family, whoever's in here, I don't know what you've done. I don't know your story. You may have done some stuff. The Bible says you can multiply all the sins that you did times 50 trillion. You won't even touch the God's grace for you. Where sin abound, God's grace abound all the more. Like you can never out sin the grace and the goodness of God. I think that's why God used Paul, a murderer. You know what I'm saying? David, he committed adultery. He got his boy killed, slept with his wife, and then tried to kill him and tried to lie about it. Like literally, God used a donkey for God's sake, a dumb animal, to talk, right, to the prophet uh, uh, Bilam. He used like in Kings or Samuel. God uses people. God uses fishermen, uneducated people, no degrees, Nothing. God uses Gideon. God, I think he uses those people. So when you see the life of David uh, uh, or Samuel or Jacob, the trickster, you're like, okay, God, if you can use them, oh, surely, God, you can use me. Confess it. Give it to God. Let it go. Never uh, underestimate God's grace. You don't got to be afraid that God won't forgive you if you mess up. That's why I love the Christian faith. Other religions say do this and you receive this. Christianity says it's already been done, so come, we operate from a different perspective. Don't be afraid of judgment. Sometimes we're afraid by the church. Sometimes we're afraid that we'll be embarrassed because some of us, like me, maybe you've been dealing with stuff for a long time. It's been decades, you know, at least for me. Ten, I'm almost 30, 10 years, 15 years. Some of y'all, when you get older, you're going to be like, man, I've been, it's been 15 years, and I'm still, I can't stop gossiping. I can't stop cussing. I can't stop lusting. I'm greedy. I want money. And you just, you're afraid to admit it. It's okay, family. Admit it. God wants to work. And it happens as we work together. Confess your sins. How do you describe your sins and shortcomings to God? Do you lie about it? Do you try to make it sound a little bit better? Do you shift blame to other people like Adam and Eve did? The woman you gave me, the serpent made me do it. Like, are you honest with your sins do you make excuses? Are you honest with God about what it is? Or do you try to lie to God about what you have done? I'll end here, um, 1 John uh, 1, 9 through 10. It says, if we confess our sins, notice the difference between eight. Eight is the sin nature. I skipped a lot. There's so much I could have said about that. I just want to be good on time. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous. So in other words, you gotta, God's going to forgive you, but you got to confess it first. God wants to give you freedom, but you got to confess it first. And if he does, he is faithful and righteous so that he will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from every unrighteousness that we have done. If you need cleansing, if you need God to, to move on your behalf, you need to confess your sins. Right? There's only two options when dealing with your sin. You can lie about it or you can be honest with God. And maybe some of us have been lying our whole lives. And now it's time to be honest with God about your sin. 
Confession is a normal part of the Christian life. We must take personal responsibility for our sins. You can't blame nobody. When you die, they always say there's two things promised in this world, taxes, amen, and death. I'm not trying to pay taxes, though. Story on that later. Anyways, uh, taxes and death, those are the only guarantees. Oh, yeah, and trials and tribulations because Jesus said that, and it's all over the Bible. Like, those are your guarantees. But when you stand before God, there's no more, oh, um, I, did, I went to church, God, you know, I helped a homeless guy one time. What's up, Jesus, JC, my man, brother, what's good? That ain't going to work out there, right? We must be honest. If in confession, we must repent. Um, that means to turn around 180. In other words, it means to have a change of heart. You need to change your mind, your thought toward those things and see it the way God sees it. If you want to have this walk with God or how to walk with God, you got to confess sin and you got to separate yourselves from those things. And it's not like a white knuckled, lace up your bootstraps by your own power. Believe me, I've tried that. Many, some of you guys try to, you try to do it yourself and guess what? I still fail. You need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit of God, be filled with him, spend time with him. And as you do that, your cravings and desires will be more of what God wants. That's why the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you desires of your heart. That doesn't mean God is going to answer whatever you want and be like a genie to you. That means that when you spend time with God, you're going to want what he wants. And because God already said he's going to do what he said he's going to do in his word, then he's going to answer the prayer because it's already been answered. That makes sense? Sounded right when I said it, but anyways, God's going to do it because he already decreed it in his holy word to be done. So we must repent. Closing here, we can all stand up. If we walk with God, God will cause us to deal with our sin. That's interesting. Y'all can stand. We're about to close. If you want to walk with God and have a relationship with God, it, it, it's, it comes with the territory. God is going to want you to deal with your sin and your issues. Then the opposite is true. If we are unwilling to deal with our sin and be honest with God, with our walk with God, um, that will affect how we walk with God and what we hear from him. We must look at ourselves in the mirror and be honest about what we see. You have to be honest. This is the book. This is the word of God. This is the mirror. It's going to let you know. Fellas, we got to learn from the ladies. Ladies use more than one mirror. Amen. Right? When they go to the bathroom, the first mirror is the room, room, mirror in the bathroom. That's just the face. Then, like Menang Alki, you got the long mirror in the house. That's mirror two. Then you get in the car, and you got the little mirror in the car. That's mirror three. Then you get to work. When you just clocked in, then you go to the mirror at work. That's mirror number four, right? And then mirror number five is in your pocket. You take it out. It's the little mirror, right? They, fo they want to not forget how they look like, right? Fellas, we just one time, we good. Ladies... Like, we got to be not only, like, look in the mirror intensely. We got to look at God's word and look at every angle, every section. We got to make sure that we look like we're supposed to look. Don't look and forget who you are. But remember, pay close attention to how God wants you so that way you can have a successful walk. And if you put your trust in, in Christ and be empowered by him and do what the word of God says, you'll be able to have a successful walk with God. Um, dear Lord, thank you for your word. God, thank you for this time. Lord, um, God, I believe that this message is for somebody, God. God, I know we got a lot of mess, God. We have a lot of sins, Lord. My God, my list is just, uh, Lord, it's many. Um, many things that I do that do not honor you, the thoughts that I think that do not honor you, the words that I say, God, hurt people, offensive, whatever it may be, Lord. And I know I'm not the only one, God. That list, God, it, it, if we were to put it in here, God, I feel as if this whole room could not fill up all the things that I've done, God, throughout my whole 20 years, uh, 29 years of life, God. And I'm not, I'm not the only, only one, God. There's several of us here, God. we professional sinners. We know how to sin well, God. we good at sinning. We enjoy it. And don't even think once about you, God. We sin and go to sleep with a smile on our face, God, not even caring about you, Lord. So I pray, God, if, if we are in that place, God, I pray that you would shed light, maybe we got to really examine our walk with the Lord say, man, do I really trust in Jesus? Because I keep doing the same thing. I hear the preacher, I hear y'all not keep talking about it, but honestly, I don't care. Like, you know, and Lord, I pray that people would really examine their walk with you, Jesus, to see if they truly have a saving faith. In other words, if they truly have put their trust in you, because if we have a regular lifestyle that's in sin and in darkness, God, we, the truth is not in us, the Bible says, God, we don't have the light. And to have the light is to have a knowledge of God and to have a relationship, God, with you. 
So, Lord, we pray that you would cleanse us, God. And my God, um, even going down further from verse 10 to chapter 2, verse 1, God, we have a, an ambassador, God, who works on behalf, God, our, an advocate, God. If we say, man, God, I'm not good enough, God, I can't do it, but I trust, I call on the name of Jesus to step into my place, Lord, you will come in, God. You are the best judge and ruler and lawyer. You ain't never lost a case, God. Your record is undefeated, and no one will be ever to defeat you, no matter how bad the other person's list of sins may be, God, because the blood is that sufficient, God, it is that powerful. So we trust in your, your work, God, but help us to be honest and confess it first, to be real with you, God. Free some of us, we're so afraid to show our real selves, God. God, I pray that we would be honest with our sin, that we would deal with it, God, not that we have to try to pay it off or work it off to earn your approval, but just give it to you, Lord. You freely are offering us um, a, a light, God. You said, my yoke is light. Take it. We don't want to carry. Some of us, is, if, if we can see supernatural, we come in with balls and chains around our necks, our hands and feet. Spiritually, we're dragging all this guilt and all this shame with us. And God, you're looking at us and saying, just let it go, fam. Just drop it. You don't need it. Just come to me. And yet we say, no, Jesus, I can do by myself. I don't need you. I'm going to get the right education. I'm going to get the right job. Then I'm going to find this spouse. I'm going to show this person. I'm going to show my mama. I'm going to show my daddy because they said I'm not good enough or whatever it may be. This person, when I was eight years old, said I'll never make it in sports. My coach said this. My teacher said this. Whatever it may be, we think that we're going to show them and then we'll be good, Lord. But no, ultimately, you have called us to yourself, Lord. We have new identity. May we find our ultimate satisfaction. And what I have been learning, God, until we find no other supreme worth and joy in the person of Jesus, God, nothing else will satisfy us. So, God, we confess it. We run to you. We trust in you because that's what the gospel is, God. How a good God loves sinful, wicked people, Lord, that you loved us so much that you gave yourselves to us, but your work and your blood is only efficient to those who put their trust in you. It's able for everybody, but only effective in those who put their faith in Jesus. So thank you, God. Forgive us. Forgive me of my sins, God. As my man Joe prayed for his children, he said, God, let me pray for them because maybe they've done something wrong. So I pray for my family here. Maybe there's some stuff that they have done. They're not confessing to you. Or maybe, maybe even here, God, they're sitting here. God, they're not thinking about the message. God, they're on their phones. They're watching other videos and things like that. God, we got headphones on. We're not trying to hear from you, God. We're so closed off to you. We're spiritually dead and separated from you, God. Shine a light now in the lives of those people. Begin to draw them towards you, God. Help them to fall in love with you to be God so God just in love with the person of Jesus and the Holy Spirit that they would remind them of who they are God and what you have done for them through your work on the cross that you are faithful God you're not going to judge us Lord the world has already been judged God the wrath of God is not on those who put your faith on you we don't have to be afraid may we not listen to the lies from the pits of hell that tells us God is going to judge you he's going to hate you if they know because the enemy knows once we confess it once we bring it into the light God we are free because we are forgiven so God I pray you would bring everything to the light Lord that you would deal with those things that we need to deal with Lord we confess it to you in Jesus name God we look for the cleansing power of the blood God there's wonder working power in the blood of Jesus God and it's still active and available for us today so we love you God we thank you in your wonderful and beautiful name we pray amen